Hazardous Pause One, representing Israel Records, Los Angeles, real hip hop. I was born in Compton, California, home of NWA, classic hip hop, pretty much all the real shit. Started rhyming in about 98, I wanna say. I mean, more or less just writing rhymes, poetry, I couldn't spit for shit. And uh, got sent to camp for breaking and entering. I met a lot of homies in there. They used to write raps and shit, cats from different hoods. And uh, my homie T2 pretty much showed me more or less the whole formula to spinning. Cause I could write shit, but I couldn't really, I couldn't really carry it out. So he helped build my confidence. I learned the flow from there. Him and a homie from uh, East Coast and uh, just built from there. Got out, started doing open mics. The uh, freestyle battles, the, the house parties, the parks, anywhere there was a cypher, a session, didn't matter. I was jumping on the mics. And that's more or less where the battle shit came from because trying to prove myself in the streets, a lot of cats want to test because um, I'm Hispanic, so they figure this dude can't rap. There's no way this dude can spit. So gradually the cypher got smaller and smaller and smaller until I started weeding out all the whack dudes, just showing more or less like the swords are sharp. And really I just wanted a rhyme to express myself. Uh, been doing this shit about, I want to say like nine, ten years now. Just going hard, trying to, trying to get shit accomplished. Really, my whole thing is, I'm not trying to bring nothing new. Uh, I'm not trying to bring nothing back. I'm just trying to do me, something real. A lot of people say that, that the sound is more like storytelling, like what shit used to be, like the golden age. And uh, that's a compliment to me because I grew up listening to Pun, to DITC, to Warren G, to Snoop, Nate, West Coast, East Coast, even some Southern stuff, Outkast. But it was always, always had content, always had substance. And I feel like that should definitely influence my music. And it's almost like a time capsule more or less. Like I'm rhyming with that same soul from back then, but in the modern days. And trying to push forward to the future. Hopefully, I mean really, a lot of people say last of a dying breed type of shit. I don't want to hype myself up like that. I just want to say I do real music for real people. And I try to bring the lyricism back, tell a story, hopefully change somebody's life. You know what I'm saying? Teach them a couple lessons or whatever. It's actually all for my son right here. Really, at the end of the day, it ain't about the groupies. It ain't about free drugs, getting into the parties free. It ain't about the cars, the jewelry, none of that shit. That's, I mean, those are the perks. Some people like get lost in that shit, but really at the end of the day, I'm trying to leave something for him. Cause my pops passed back in 95 from AIDS and didn't leave me with shit. And it wasn't really his fault, but it happened to me and I don't want to repeat that cycle. So I'm going as hard as I can, like losing sleep or whatever, blood, sweat and tears so I can leave this little man something for I want to say I've been rhyming for about, about nine, 10 years. But as far as like really making noise, I want to say about four. Excluding all the time, I've been to prison twice, you know, a year each time, which isn't like a huge stretch. But when you take somebody out the game like that, they can't really make an impact in the industry. They can't really make noise. So it's like you take them out of there and you get better in there. I made a lot of connects, but at the same time, I didn't have a chance to, to prove myself and, and earn stripes out here. And so the industry could see. So I lost a little bit of time, but I said I've been rhyming about 10 years. I read this thing the atmosphere said, he said that he got out of this phase where he felt like he had to prove himself to all these other rappers. And when I read that shit, it made a lot of sense because that was my whole thing. Once that, that switch got flipped on, I was stuck in that mode to where it was like, I have to out-rap everybody. And don't get me wrong, that, that's still in my heart. But at the same time, it's like, I, I had people come up to me telling me like, my songs made their day. My songs changed the way they looked at shit. And to me, that, that has more worth than somebody laughing at my punchlines, which is cool, you gotta please the crowd, but at the same time, it's like, I wanna have a longer impact, I want longevity, you know what I'm saying? It's for the people. I would say, like, this mixtape is actually like a couple years in the making, excluding, I mean, count, even counting the time I did in jail, whatever, and just learning the process of recording, you know, uh, writing hooks, you know, just the whole formula and format for songs, I would say, 2010 is more like being more consistent, more fluid, covering more ground, and just trying to build and expand, really. That's the whole definition of the verbal virus, is more or less expanding outside. I love Los Angeles, I love the West Coast, you know, but I say hip hop is universal. If you're real, it's real. You respect real music, you like real music. So I'm trying to expand 
from out here, but still represent the West Coast, Los Angeles, Norwalk, and the streets and the blocks I live on, but still expand and make this shit worldwide. Like, I don't really believe in like the pay to play. Like I'm not gonna pay a DJ to play my shit. I'm not gonna pay this cat X amount of money to do a 16 bar verse. I'm not gonna pay to jump on stage and open up at 9.30. I feel like, not, not that I'm better than that, but I am better than that. Like I pay my dues, I earn my stripes. And you know, a lot of cats will fall for the okie doke. But as far as like the mixtape, there's a lot of special guests that are doing shit on the strength, out of respect and out of love for the direction that I'm going in. And it's a mutual respect. A lot of these cats are heavy hitters, legends really. Like I don't want to overhype the shit, but yeah. You'll hear it when it checks when it comes out. Check it out. Global Virus Volume 2. I was in Corcoran Delano, that's in uh, Kern County. Um, did time in county, did a lot of time in county. Did time in uh well, I've been doing time since I was 13. Cause really like that's why I don't glorify it, that's why I don't really rap about it and talk about it too much. It's because people hype it up like it's the place to be. And it's actually not. It's really, really fucked up. And if you're not strong psychologically, Physically, spiritually, that shit will destroy you. And a lot of cats don't make it out, and they get stuck in that cycle. They get stuck there and turn into animals gradually. I got a lot, of, I got family that are lifers, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of cousins, a lot of people doing eight, 10, 12 year stretches, you know what I mean? Plus life, lifetime sport. So it's not a fucking game. Like, this shit is not fun, you know, it's not the place to be. I mean, I know it's, everybody wants to be a tough guy rapper, everybody wants to kill a million people in a song and sell kilos and and I'm the hardest dude on the block, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's fine, but the bullets burn. The jail is real, the handcuffs hurt. You get stomped out, pepper sprayed, shit is real. And I think a lot of cats that have never been in that position have no respect for it. So they feel like they can get away with being tough and talking tough and walking with their chest out. I honestly don't believe in that because I've seen it. And I, don't, I have no reason to throw that out there. It's not a card I like to pull. But just so people know, I have been through that. I've had real life experiences and it shows in my music. But I don't like to rap about prison because I don't want to glorify that shit. You know what I'm saying? So all the little homies out there, everybody out there, stay the fuck out of jail. Real shit. There ain't nothing in there for you. Nothing. Yeah. See? Cats like these. Yo, we rhyme when we please. Verbal virus, AKA, it's like a deadly disease. Flowing with the homie DJ Breeze from Divine Forces. Freestyle flows come in plenty of sources. I'm on another level, holding up the page, ready to rock the mic, regardless of the stage, regardless of the time, regardless of the DJs. Cats on the freeway trying to make it to the show. Off of the dome, I'll let you know this is no homo, nothing gay, no faggot shit. Cats bragging with rhymes that they keep writing, keep hyping up shit like it's free. Know when you can't fuck with me, I'm the P, like the one that fucks with havoc on the microphone, spitting sick. It's all magic, it's like black magic. Cats rapping so whack, and that's tragic. Like the fucking with the Ouija, represent for Biggie, Pac, even easy. When I'm rhyming in the booth, I'm rapping for the dead cats, ODB, and even proof. And this is living proof, more evidence. We got a black president, we need a brown one. Talking about real MCs, you found one.